thank you for joining us. I'm Tessa Spencer and tonight I'm highlighting something truly special that's happening at a low country high school where students are learning the sky is the limit. Literally, I'm taking you behind the scenes of the Air Force Junior ROTC program at RB Stahl High School in North Charleston. Over the next half hour, you'll hear how this program is changing lives through mentoring and by inspiring, challenging and introducing students to the world of aviation. This wall is all the majority of my students. Every, every student on this wall has gone to college. Lonnie Ford, a retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and currently an instructor with the JROTC at Stahl High School. She just finished at USC and she wanted med school. Oh, wow. And all of these are right through here. All these going to law school. He's in medical school. As a leader teaching future leaders, Lieutenant Colonel Ford is deeply invested in the lives of his students. My wife says we teach all, treat all our kids like, like they're mine. Yeah. And, and I do. Mm -hmm. um, they all deserve opportunity. They all deserve an opportunity to just go and try um, and then get up and try again. It's a lesson that Air Force JROTC cadet Calissa Tony doesn't take for granted. It provides a lot of opportunity and most importantly exposure. I enjoy the fact that I get to give back what was poured into me. And Calissa was able to do just that during a school visit, piquing the interest of then eighth grader Arida Ojeda's to become an ROTC cadet. I want to join ROTC because like I feel like like being born here is not like um uh, like something that you can't like if you weren't born in here it's not like a, um something that can stop you doing things that you can't like mm -hmm. like you can do things and learn about it and then have an opportunity to do more things. Like Junior Jana Jacobs. You don't want to add as much force. Who, after joining Stahl's JROTC program, quickly found out that it was more than just military drills. I thought I was just going to be doing left faces, right faces, you know, <laughs> the whole command stuff. But honestly, all the, the opportunities that I've been given from ROTC, all the values that I've learned, all the, the social skills, like being able to talk to you right now has come from ROTC. When I first walked in as a freshman, yeah. <laughs> Being on the news, what? No, I would have never known. Steve Larson is the principal of Stahl High School. Well, I'll tell you, it starts with 2,000 amazing kids that we have coming to school here every day. Mm -hmm. And with the ROTC? In particular, yeah. We are very proud of our ROTC uh, cadets and our instructors because our instructors, they really hand the program over to them. Um, they're the leaders of our school. Uh, they are excellent role models for all the other students in our school, uh, particularly because they, they care so much. And because of the foundation Lonnie Ford lays through the simple gesture of caring. Whatever the raw material going into the process, we develop, we have a product that we produce at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and that product is prepared to go out and make a contribution to, to anything, anywhere. Because if a person can speak and, and write and, and stand up for oneself, um, that person can work anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, that person can work anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and we've proven that presenting opportunities, preparing them for active duty or college with either decision, fostering a lifelong connection. We don't leave them when they go to school. They go to college. I go to every graduation. Yes, every graduation, racking up sky miles and driving miles to cement his commitment to their success. One morning I got up and flew to Syracuse, New York, uh -huh. and left there, came back down to, to Columbia, drove over to Greenville, Went to that graduation, went to the night graduation down in, in, the, in, in Charleston. Wow. So it just, you so know. So they see the investment that you made and you gave them your word that you would be with them. And all we do is keep a promise. Right. And that, that's all it is, keeping a promise. And you keep that promise and all of a sudden they, they still call. They, they call and they come by. Gathering every Christmas for a dessert dinner. Ford invites graduates and seniors into his home. It's an opportunity yes. for those who were once part of the JROTC to mentor current students. We've been blessed. The yeah. kids kept picking up on each other, attending each graduation, and just being there for each other. With almost 18 years of being there for his students, Lieutenant Colonel Ford took a huge step forward, creating opportunities that introduced the teens to the world of aviation. At first, there were a lot of closed doors. Well, we, we got, tired, got tired of being turned down. We got tired of not being able to fly with other organizations or didn't have the funding or our kids weren't prepared. 
So I prepared my kids. You know, like when you go in public, yeah. your kids go in public, they know exactly how to act. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what to do. So we prepared our students for it, and we took them out there, and we impressed. That preparation came through Ford and colleagues. Collectively, their backgrounds in business, law, and aviation were the ideal trifecta to forming the Lowcountry Aviation Academy. Its mission, educate, inspire, and empower diverse Lowcountry youth through formalized aviation and aeronautical science education and professional aviation training. Now, for those organizations that had once said no. And I said, well, only reason I'm here now is for my kids to fly. I had a selfish reason for joining. <laughs> I want my kids to fly. And since then, I've, I've had five people with pilot's license. Yeah. And what is that, that experience from your point of view when you see them doing that and then they get their license? I mean, what is that from your, from your lens? What's that experience like? It is like, you know, like the birth of a baby. You know, it's like a birth of a baby. It's like, um, you know, I don't know what way you're spiritual. It's why someone accept a change in life. And they see that they can do this. And everyone else can do it. You know, so all of a sudden they become part of the hill. Then they reach down and pull as many people up as possible. And you, when you become a mentor, we expect you to mentor. We expect you to lead. We expect you to come back. We expect you to brief. We expect you to call other people and encourage them. Because when they're down, someone calls them, they know what they've been through. Um, at that point, that person stands up very quickly. And, and I'm, that part of it I'm proud of. When we come back, we'll take you out to Berkeley County Airport, where Stahl High School ROTC students are taking to the skies, some for the very first time. How the exposure above the clouds is teaching them to aim high. Welcome back. Stahl High School's Air Force Junior ROTC is a force to be reckoned with. Cadets are exposed to more than leadership in military drills. Thanks to the Lowcountry Aerospace Academy, JROTC students are learning how to fly. So today, the biggest thing is we want to be safe. A briefing before taking to the skies. It's starting to get busy at Monk's Corner. Um, so when you guys are out on the ramp, be aware of other planes that are moving around you, especially if they got their engine running, so you don't want to walk out in front of them. And it's hard not to on a crisp Saturday morning in Berkeley County. With nothing but sunshine, blue skies, and anticipation. So we have these right here. These just block the air vents so birds can't get in there and make nests mm -hmm. or anything like that. So we, we pull that out. We also check down here, this little filter, make sure it's like not dented up because that's what uh, keeps the clean air going into there, keeps rocks from going inside and stuff like that. For some, so just step on the step, oh, don't step on the wing and then just. It's their first time in a cockpit. Cadet Leanna Thomas has very few words and a smile hides the fact that she also has plenty of nerves, but she still completes her assignment. It has been kind of great right now. For the experience overall, it's just scary. scary. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. The flight instructor there offering so words of encouragement to Cadet Thomas. Not much older than Thomas, Kirk Bennett got his private pilot's license at the age of 17. His love of aviation started around the age of three. To fly back and forth to Jamaica to visit family, and then that's what got me into aviation. Yeah. And now you can fly yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me what you're going to do with uh, your first, with your student here today. So what we'll do, we're going to go for a little discovery flight. So we'll fly, we'll take off, we'll head over the lakes, we'll take a little tour, and then we'll come back and then land. Now it's go time. And the taxi down the runway begins. The exposure to something they've never done before is the big payoff for leaders of Lowcountry Aerospace Academy. In 2017, Colonel C.J. Wills was the Air Force ROTC commander at the Citadel. He's now president and CEO of the Lowcountry Aerospace Academy. What we do here is transformational to these students' lives. Many of them show up never having even been near an airplane, let alone in one, and we give them an, an opportunity to uh, receive flight instruction in the airplane. So they're sitting in the left seat, flying the airplane in three-dimensional airspace. Uh, many of them, when they land, you can't take the smile off their face. Uh, and it's really chicken, chicken soup for an old fighter pilot's soul when one of them says, 
uh, I want to fly. I want to be a pilot. While training students to go on to have careers in aviation would be the ultimate notch on the proverbial belt. The goal is not to make every junior ROTC student that comes through the Aerospace Academy a pilot. Our goal is for these young men and young women to see the world differently, to experience uh, STEM through the pursuit of aviation, learn a little bit more about uh, math, engineering, uh, even fluid dynamics, basic fluid dynamics, things they never would probably get the chance to study in school. Uh, and in doing so, maybe change their perspective on the opportunities that are available to them. Lowcountry Aerospace Academy's partnership with junior ROTC groups around the Lowcountry, Civil Air Patrol, and Women in Aviation International truly provides a look into the world of aviation and avionics, which is the electronics and equipment specifically designed for use in aviation. Yeah. I feel so short now. <laughs> okay, so if it's too close to you, you can pull that handle right there. You see that little black handle? This? Yep. So I have to pull it. Pull it towards you. Mm-hmm. And then push your feet on these little corners right here. Right. Yeah, and then push out. You should kick the rudder down. <laughs> Pull, pull harder on the little lever. There you go. Now push it. There you go. And then can let go? Yep. Okay. Does that feel comfortable? Yes. Sir. Perfect. All right. Cool. We've been talking about the students. Can you close it? Yeah. But what about the parents? What do they think of this experience? Cadet Travis Darby is all for the training, despite his family's concerns. Flying is a new experience because my family really doesn't fly. So really being able and having a chance to fly is it's just really amazing because like it's a different experience when you're in the air. Von Dest Fishburn is behind exposing junior ROTC students to aviation and avionics. And as a recruiter for the Hiram E. Mann Tuskegee Airmen, he looks for students to become part of the Lowcountry Aerospace Academy. Just being grateful and thank the God that these kids will be something in their life and not be lost in the uh, product of time. Fishburne was reluctant to speak because he wanted the focus to just be on the students, but he does play a major part in their journey. It's not strange to see him out on the flight line with a camera around his neck. 10, 20 years of taking pictures Mm -hmm. of all these students, but to know the ups and downs and what these young students are going through. To see that smile, to see that smile, for the, especially the students who've never taken a flight before, to know the fear that they have. But when they come back, it's like, wow. Speaking of when they come back from that first flight, we introduced cadet Leanna Thomas, who was facing her first flight with some trepidation. So um, how was it? The experience was great. Yep, there's that smile Von Dess Fishburne was talking about. Thomas relieved, though, still to be back on the ground. I was, like, wondering how would the London be a little bumpy. You'll do it again? Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> but not before she takes care of some crew duties. You blew it. Hey, have to push the blame. You got it. <laughs> the men always say that. They, they don't mean that. <laughs> the students, always under the watchful eye of Lieutenant Colonel Ford. Make sure you signs off on your book. And before we sign off, when we come back, there's more to explore with the Stahl High School Junior ROTC. We'll head back to the classroom and hear from students who have been inspired to have military careers in aviation or to take other career paths that allow their learned confidence and leadership skills to shine. As we near a close, 2,000 students attend R.B. Stahl High School in North Charleston, and of them, 259 are enrolled in the Air Force Junior ROTC program. Over the past half hour, we've shown you just a small view of the dedication to the overall development of students that choose to join the ranks, whether they choose the military path or not. Here's a last look at what a few hope their future holds and the final words from the man who was willing to take a chance. Every Air Force Junior ROTC program has a student leader. The ROTC program here at RB Stahl is, in my opinion, like no other. Meet Wing Commander Jalen Manigo. This program has taught me to, you know, don't stand still in life. You want to make sure that you take your opportunities and then roll with it. 
um, make sure that you take every advantage in life. This young man commands a room with his presence. He credits Lieutenant Colonel Lonnie Ford and the ROTC program for bringing out the best in him as he considers a career in middle-level education. So what, what I've learned here is communication is very strong, especially when you're talking to people who are older than you and younger than you, which is what I think, in my opinion, is very useful in the education field. Useful skills that are always put to use during the course of a school day and beyond. Because we go out into the real world and we not only talk to um, teachers, faculty, and staff here at Arby Stahl, but we talk to everybody in the community as well. So I believe that communication um, on those different levels will help me in the future. Like Cadet Nicolas Paquero. Colombia. Bogota, Colombia. Nicolas was more comfortable communicating in his native language. Es una experiencia que nunca podría tener de, digamos, volar aviones, de tener una, como un, una clase de liderazgo. He says that he is loving the experience of ROTC because there is no class like it in his country for aviation and there's a lot to learn. And as far as a future in aviation, Pienso ser piloto de, de aviación comercial en un futuro. He says he wants to become a commercial airplane pilot. It's stories like these that are a testament to how Stahl High School's ROTC program has a positive influence over the lives of their students. To dream big. Yes, ma'am. Would have never been sitting right here, like I said. Would have never had the opportunities given to me. Um, Would have never known the, the things that I know now about aviation, about all the opportunities that I have that are limitless by just me saying, yes, I want to do this. It's hard not to be motivated by the sheer joy and light that you see in these students' faces when they talk about their junior ROTC experience. Each one, for whatever reason it may be, agreeing to bet on themselves. A wager placed first by Lieutenant Colonel Lonnie Ford. I, I, I think I think the, if the program we we, we we hopefully we turn it to a process. We want to whatever the raw material going into the process. We develop. We have a product that we produce at the end, and and that product is prepared to go out and make a contribution to to anything anywhere. Because if a person can speak and write and, and stand up for oneself, um, that person can work anywhere. I mean, that person can work anywhere, and, and we've proven that. Thank you for watching Cadet to Cockpit, the JROTC journey to aviation. You can read more about the Lowcountry Aerospace Academy on our website, abcnews4.com.